long-standing uh, member of the IOC right now, and you've never been afraid to speak your mind. So here you are in Tokyo. I would love to hear your unvarnished opinion about how this thing is going. I mean, something that I'm not going to read in the press releases. Well, it's actually, you know, from a, from a, an Olympic sport perspective and a broadcasting perspective and all that, it's, it's going entirely normally. The competition is fantastic. The television images going around the world is fantastic as we thought they would be. It's just on the ground a little bit. The, the COVID specter is, is affecting the Japanese public uh, more than we thought. And, and while they, they're getting into the games, and especially because Japan is having quite a good games, um, the sort of the opposition to the idea of proceeding with the games has, has gradually dissolved. But, but there's this overriding concern among the Japanese public that the, the people coming in to the games, uh, are in some way responsible for the spreading of the virus. Notwithstanding the fact that they're all in, in very secure bubbles, you know, including the IOC, including the athletes in the village. So there's, there's that tension that, that still exists, but it's, it's not interfering with the sport, which is well organized and the athletes are uh, getting the chance that they hoped and prayed for, uh, ever since, uh, last, uh, a year ago, March when the postponement was announced. So. In that respect, it's uh, it's been terrific, and I, my guess is that audiences around the world are enjoying the sport. What's the single thing that surprised you most uh, so far? Something you really would have not in any way expected before you actually showed up in Tokyo? I guess it is the growing resistance among the Japanese public, uh, sort of not terribly active opposition, but just a resentment, I guess, in some respect of the additional risk that they perceive coming from the outsiders, even though, I mean, the, the tests and the, the statistics show that it's, it's simply not a, a, a viable concern. No fans, as you said. I mean, they're all in a bubble. Here in the United States, uh, you know, we've, we've run baseball, we've run basketball, we've run football, we've run the NCAA, um, and starting off with no fans and then quickly with fans. And, you know, an average day COVID numbers in Japan sounds awesome from an American perspective. Uh, I mean, wh wh why is, has this been so problematic on the ground for the Japanese? Why has the Japanese prime minister struggled so mightily with something that, you know, so many other parts of the world have had a much easier time with? It's, it's not entirely certain, I must say, and, and, and we're having trouble figuring it out because uh, we, the IOC, because there are all kinds of Japanese sports events. Uh, they're, they're, you know, professional baseball league and their, and their, their sumo contests are, are going on uh, with spectators uh, in some of the same stadia that are being used for the Olympics in, in which no spectator, spectators are being allowed. And there's a disconnect there that, that we haven't figured out and that, that hasn't been explained. But I suspect at the root of it all is the the relative slowness with which uh, a, an ordinarily very organized society is is rolling out the the vaccines, and and that that I, I think is a an overriding concern among uh, the Japanese public at large.